Of the seven sacraments, two are considered dominical sacraments and five are considered sacraments of the church. The two dominical sacraments are baptism and the Lord's Supper or Eucharist. It's called this because we see that the Lord directly gave them to us in the New Testament. He tells the disciples to go and baptize all nations in Matthew 28. He conducts the first Eucharistic meal at, at the Last Supper. And then in 1 Corinthians 11, St. Paul talks about how he received from the Lord these, this command and passes it on to them that they continue to do this, this Eucharistic meal. And so those are given very directly by God. The other piece is that we believe that these sacraments are normative for all Christians to take part in, that all Christians should be baptized and all Christians should receive the body and blood of our Lord in the Eucharist through communion. Not all Christians are called necessarily to be married. Not all Christians are called necessarily to ordination. But all Christians are called to receive baptism and the Lord's Supper. So I'm back here at our font to talk a little bit about the waters of baptism. What do we believe is going on in the sacrament? Because it must be understood that the Anglican Church's understanding of the sacraments is that they have an effect. They are more than symbol. And that's going to be a little bit different if you're coming from a denomination or a Christian group that the sacraments really weren't spoken of. Or if they were, they were spoken of only in terms of symbol. Now, they're full of symbol. There, there's symbolism all around all the sacraments. But we believe that they're more than that, that they actually achieve that which they signify, that they actually are doing something. And this is a very ancient understanding of the sacraments. And so we hold that tradition that they are doing something in us. And to understand what they're doing in us, the best way to do that is to actually go to the prayer book, go to one of the prayer books and read and see what we are saying that those are doing through our prayers. Because one of the things you'll learn about Anglicanism is that our liturgies are so very important to us because we understand that they are proclaiming our beliefs as well as leading us in worship. So let's look at the, one of the prayer books as it talks about baptism. And when we bless the waters of baptism to be used, we say this, thank you, Father, for the water of baptism in it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. So in it, we are buried with Christ. We share in his resurrection. And through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. And then we move to the actual blessing of the water proper, where the priest says this. Sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit. So we're depending upon the Holy Spirit to do any and everything in this sacrament. We pray that those here who are cleansed from sin and born again, so we believe that they are being cleansed from sin and born again, may continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. So we're being, it's actually achieving that which it symbolizes. And again, this is going to be a different from a lot of other churches that, that uh, see this only as symbol. So it's doing something in us. It's not only achieving that which it symbolizes, but it's equipping us for our future life in Christ. So this is one reason why baptism is so crucial for us and so crucial for us to understand. And lastly, the font is at the back of many Anglican churches. And the reason is so that every week when you come into church, you must pass by the font as a reminder of it's the waters of baptism that bring you into the community of faith in Christ, that make you a part of the new community. So every time we walk past, we see this symbol before us. And a lot of people will dip their fingers in the water and make the sign of the cross as they pass it is a sign of, of, of prayer and a sign of thanksgiving to God for the waters of baptism. So I hope this was helpful. A little bit longer video this time. It's a big topic. and I know this probably generated a lot more questions than not, but I hope that it was helpful at least giving you a little idea as to how we approach the sacrament of baptism.